Hi everyone, I'm Jane at Rockin' Worms. Welcome. What we're gonna do tonight is check in on Orange Julius, my big baby bin. Let's get right into it. Let me put my glasses on. All right, first thing we're gonna do is take off the plastic covering and see what the status is of the newspaper. First of all, we can see all these castings right on top. That's fantastic. We can see some of the babies already. My gosh, they're getting big already. All right. Going to dive right into uh, doing the fluff and feed, as we're calling it. One of my commenters called it a fluff and feed, and I thought that was a perfect term. So I'm going with it. You guys are great with coming up with clever ways of saying things. All right, so we've got the pool table pretty much going. I just disturbed it, of course, but the pool table going on. That's a result of the worm's natural movement action, in case you were curious. And now we're just gonna do a little fluffing and see what we've got. Oh my gosh, this is a, uh, this is a breeder right here. My uh, thought is it's probably a grown-up nanny worm um, because some of my earlier bins I uh, put in nanny worms. I stopped doing that specifically. Not that nanny worms aren't good. They're actually very good for your young worm bins. But because of my personal timing and getting to things, I have a lot of hatches already by the time I'm pulling um, the breeders out and resetting them. So they already have nanny worms in there just by their own hatches. So I don't um, need to add in separate worms from like other bins in there as nanny worms. Uh, but this must have been one of those ones where I did add worms from another bin. So I'm just gonna place that worm to the side so I can put him in one of my breeder bins. And then that way he or she or it won't be lonely on the adult side. Okay, back to uh, fluffing. This is mainly castings, as you can see. It is dark and rich, but it's also very uh, dense because castings are very, very good at retaining moisture. It's one, one of the uh, reasons why it's so good in your garden and for your plants, because it helps them retain moisture. And because Orange Julius is such a, a big, deep bin. I'm also looking to see how it may be going toward doing my first, um, you know, migration toward sifting out or removing some of the castings in here so I can add in, you know, fresh bedding, fresh volume. And this is looking really good. So I think I'm going to have to seriously consider adding, um, seriously consider setting up a migration very soon in order to uh, harvest some of these castings and, and get more fresh bedding in here. So right now, again, I'm just aerating part of it because again, it's a little dense. Not, you know, not super dense, not a big deal. Certainly if you have a, any type of the worm bags, you're going to see this kind of compaction down at the bottom of your worm bins or your worm bags, excuse me, or your CFTs, your continuous flow through bins and bigger totes and bins like this because the weight with, you know, the water that is in your castings will make that compaction happen. So it's nothing to be concerned about. It's just part of how these systems work. Okay, now I'm kind of fluffing in place and I just want to get to about half the bin volume here because I'll be able to spin it around to do the other side. But I want to do this side first because I'm actually gonna do a uh, feed on this end and guess what I'm going to feed them I am going to feed them a newspaper an avocado burrito topped with pumpkin and black-eyed peas 
and I bet you they're going to be super happy with it. Okay, so this is half the bin fluffed, and now let's do the feed. So I'm going to do a little bit of a trench here and pull that back. I am going to give them just a bit of uh, fresh bedding. I am using uh, a uh, frosting bucket I got from my warehouse store for free by asking at the bakery. If you have access to a bakery in a grocery store or perhaps a standalone bakery, you know, ask them if they, you know, what they do with their empty frosting buckets because you might be able to make a really good score. I use mine all the time for everything regarding my worms. Now I'm gonna make the newspaper an avocado burrito. This is a sale circular, again, from a local store. Here is some avocado that is frozen and just a little defrosted. I actually um, like the idea of putting this frozen food for right now into this packet of newspaper because it will um, insulate the coldness of the frozen food from the worm bodies because I do have a lot of worms in here still. And if I just plop that frozen food on top of them, it could, you know, be unpleasant for them. So by putting them in a little newspaper burrito, it might help insulate them from that cold shock. So there is the avocado burrito. Now on top of it, because I do have a lot of worms in here, I'm sure you saw them. I'm going to add some squash, not the seeds. I want to keep them separate. I have enough growing in my bins as it is. I don't need to add any more if I don't have to. Um, yeah, so some squash. And then the next thing I'm going to add in on top is more of those black eyed peas I got from my veg guy that I cooked up in my Instapot. And uh, black eyed peas and avocado are really high in calories. And I am hoping that uh, it will help these uh, little guys get more calories and grow up even faster, bigger, healthier. Okay, that's that. So next, I'm going to add just my normal warm food stuff. This is a little bit of warm chow. And then veg powder, which I forgot to add in a in the bin. <laughs> I did on the video earlier this week, but here it is. And uh, veg powder is also for sale, by the way, on my newly launched website at Rock and Worms at Do GoDaddy Sites. Dot com. So if you want to check that out, that would be cool. Maybe you can find something that uh, you're interested in. If not, I would love to have some feedback on the website because it is, you know, new and work in progress and I've never built a website before. So it's definitely a learning curve. All right. So that was Dolomite Lime uh, for pH buffering and azomite uh, powder as well, micronized, as it adds in lots of different micronutrients and vitamins as well. All right, so they're good to go. I'm gonna add in more bedding on top, and if you stick around a few more minutes, I'm gonna show you something on the other side of this bin after I spin it around. Oh, by the way, this is a discounted after holiday clearance bucket from Walmart. This is from Easter, but Halloween is coming up. So if you don't have a bakery that is accessible to you, you know, think about, um, you know, picking up some of these trick or treat little uh, plastic buckets or sand buckets and use them for your, uh, you know, toting around your worm uh, paraphernalia. Okay, so this feed is done. Now what I'm gonna do is spin the bin. See if we win any prizes. 
no. So this is on a glass, tempered glass tabletop that I had that I wasn't using. And that uh, makes a super slick surface and I'm able to, um, you know, spin it really easily. Now I'm gonna spread this over here and dig down because that avocado and newspaper burrito, I actually gave them one. I'm starting to get the newspaper. I actually gave them one a week ago. And so I'm gonna dig down and see how they did with it. And it was this, basically the same feed. It was the avocado burrito and uh, some squash and some of the black eyed peas. I can feel some of it down here. Okay, so let's see how much they ate. A lot of the newspaper. And here is another section coming up. Okay, so here it is. This is the avocado. You can see some of the avocado peeking through a little bit. And opening it up, there's the avocado. So not very much left. So they've been working on this, uh, this burrito. I will say there's a little bit of an odor. So I, I do think it's a little bit uh, anaerobic, but nothing crazy. And certainly this fluffing will get some air into this compacted castings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it that aeration and then I'm gonna put this little burrito partial left back in place, let the worms on this side of the bin eat it, finish it off, and then I am sure they're going to happily move over to the opposite side of the bin where the new avocado burrito is. Yeah, I'm not seeing, by the way, any of the black eyed peas left or any of the squash, that's all gone. So all that's left of the same size feeding you just saw me give them on the other side of the bin is this little bit of avocado and newspaper. So that's pretty good, huh? All right, let's put this back in now that it's been aerated. And through this process, I've aerated the entire bin. So that's great. And I'm gonna cover this back up. Okay. All right, last thing is to, uh, let me bring this some back out just uh, to even it off a little bit. They'll take care of that even if I didn't, but you know, it's kind of a habit, right? I'm gonna give them some fresh newspaper. Did I have any of their old newspaper? No, nope, they were pretty much done with that old newspaper. So I'm gonna give them some fresh newspaper and let these guys get back to work eating and growing and making me good castings. And like I said, I'm gonna start thinking about uh, how I'm gonna harvest this bin. I have some ideas about that that I've been you know, talking with uh, some of the castings crew about how am I gonna do this. And uh, yeah, so that'll be an exciting adventure too. So I hope you tune back in for that. All right, just putting on the plastic cover. Goes back real quick and easy, doesn't it? That's always nice. And these guys are done. Let's, uh, you know, check back on them, in on them in about a week, two weeks, probably more like two weeks, see how they're doing, and maybe send them up for migration. Mmm, that's good. All right, I hope you have a good rest of the evening. I will see you next time. I am yours in the dirt, Jane.